there to Laurie Schwab with the New York Cosmos. Johnson. Jones, this looks dangerous for a Brisbane Lions. Jones, a good cross. Johnson. Arnold's forward, so is Manis Lamont. Still Robbie Slater. Twisting and turning, getting that one across. Lamont! Manis Lamont! Teammate from Heidelberg United and another local product, Charlie Ankus. How do you feel, Charlie? A uh, bit nervous, but uh, I think I'll get used to it. Get used to it and really put in 100%. Welcome again to another one of my special interviews. I'm sitting in the company of uh, one of Australia's most decorated players. He uh, went to two two Youth World Cups, scored the winning goals in NSL Grand Finals first leg and second leg, um, and had a stellar career along the way, and a couple of injuries and a couple of confrontations, a few overseas trips. He packed a fair bit in. Fabio and Cantalupe, thank you for talking to me. Thanks, George. Thanks for having me. No, it's my, absolutely my pleasure, mate. Absolutely my pleasure. I, um, I don't want to sound like I'm that much younger, but I did, I did uh, watch you on TV, and if I'm spot on year nine in 83, uh, there was a couple of days there during June where I went to school pretty late um, because of the time difference with Mexico. I was watching oh, right, okay. Young Socceroos. Yeah. And, and I know that I went to school about 11 o'clock one morning. Um, I think it was at the Scotland game. And then my stepmother dobbed me in and my dad looked at me <laughs> and I said, oh, I slept, the alarm didn't go off or something. And my dad just looked at me and went, yeah, right. Um, there was no way. <laughs> No way, no, we're going to miss those games. We'll get to those games. Our special times yeah. for you, our special times <laughs> for Australian soccer. But yeah, let's go was. back. Let's go back. Um, yeah. where, where did, were you born in? You were born in Melbourne? No, I was born in Melbourne. I was born yeah. in uh, Melbourne and um, I lived all my life in uh, Fairfield. Yeah. Uh, uh, and um, my dad was involved with uh, the Brunswick, uh, well, at the time was Juventus, Brunswick Juventus uh, Junior, Junior Coordinator. Uh, and that's where I started uh, my, my junior days at Sumner Park in, um, in Brunswick, uh, yeah. off Mary Creek there. And Mary Creek was right beside the ground. And I remember uh, every time we used to play there, uh, we used to lose a lot of soccer balls down the, the Mary Creek. And some of the parents used to, to spread out and line up alongside the, the creek there, just in case uh, some, of the, some of us would kick the ball and go out of the, go out of the ground and go down the creek and you know at that, those times the you know the balls were pretty expensive and and um, you know they couldn't afford to uh to lose a lot of balls down the merry creek but yeah i started my days uh at Brunswick Juvenile when i was probably i started by like, 10 years old and just worked myself through the junior ranks uh at Brunswick Juvenile yeah before that you got any recollections of going to the soccer like or was it just after that or did you go and watch before no or... look i always I always uh, liked the game and uh, my dad used to go and watch uh, Juventus in the heydays in the 70s, your Pat Della Rockers, your Dino De Marquis, and I used to go with my dad to Olympia Park. I remember quite, you know, I could really remember it uh, like it was yesterday. And, I, and he used to, once we go through the gates, I used to go off and uh, I just used to watch the game just uh, and just, I just loved it, you know. Uh, I just wanted, I just wanted to be where they were when I was young. But um, yeah, and look, I had a, I had a sense for AFL too. I mean, I um, 
at my school days, uh, I was playing. I was playing AFL on the Saturday, and and come on the Sunday, I was playing uh, for Juventus for my club. And um, where, where were you going was, to school? I went to Ivano Grammar, uh, and and what happened was uh, I I got. I got an invite back back then. Uh, I, I we played uh, we played a school and there was uh, I think one of, I think there was a Collingwood um, recruiting officer there at that time. You know, talking about the eighties. Yeah. Um, and he gave me. Well, I was best man on ground, and he gave me a, a, a Collingwood bag and said, "Look." If you're interested and in, to to come and trial at Collingwood, um, you know the the offers on the table, kind of, you know. Uh, but I just I I just you know it, it got to a stage when I got to about 16 years old. It got to a stage. My dad said, "Look, what do you want to do?" He says, "It's either you know you you play soccer or you play AFL." And I chose uh, soccer because I just loved it so much. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so during, that, during those junior years, well, who were some of the other young guys that you grew up with that actually went on and played a bit as well? Yeah, well, there was uh, there was Fab Angelier, the oh, Angelier yeah. brothers. Yeah. Oscar Carino. I I played against Oscar Carino, um, John Markovsky, uh, Paul Trimboli came through Sunshine Heights. There was a lot of good, you know. Uh, I mean, at that stage, there was a lot of good. A junior uh, players that were, were playing for other uh, other clubs and and it was uh, yeah look it was pretty competitive because uh, I remember we 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 played in a, I played in under 14s uh, for Juventus and then for some reason uh, the federation the following year changed the rules and so we didn't go to under 15s we went to under 16s straight away so. Okay. So, so I was always playing uh, against older type, uh, you know. I mean, uh, kids my around my age. So that made me a lot better. I thought that you know, uh, playing against the bigger or, or and stronger yep. Uh, yep. junior players, and and I felt that it would hold me in good stead. So, yep. um, yeah, and that and that. And that went on to, you know, as I was, you know, under 18s. And then, you know, I started getting inv invitations to play reserves for, for Juventus. Um, you know. In the old state league still before they went national? Yeah, the old state league. Yeah, the old state league. Where I had Pat Delarocca as my, um, as my coach uh, towards the end of my junior days. And he yeah. was still playing for uh, Juventus. Uh, he was coming to, to, towards the end of his career. Uh, he was a big influence on me. Um, and, um, yeah, and, it, it, you know, I remember they, they would say, uh, if, if you were to play on the, sometimes we'd play on a Saturday and, um, Pat De La Roca after the game would say, uh, oh, look, um, uh, there's got to be two players got to go tomorrow to Middle Park, the old Middle Park of South yep. Melbourne, yep, yep. uh, be there at, be there at, uh. At 12 o'clock, um, you've got to sit on a bench for the reserves because, you know, they had some, you know, if they had any injuries or suspensions. So yeah, I would go down there and, um, you know, um, yeah, and, and that's how it started. And, you know, sit on the bench and then maybe come on for 20 minutes and then just slowly, slowly went through the, um, went through the ranks that way, uh, George. Okay, very good. Um, at what point did you start getting some regular reserve games? I just... What I was thinking at as a junior and as you were going through, what position were you generally? Were you always up front, or did you? No, no, play? no. I was always, I always played as a left side player. I was always a left sided player. I, yep. I, I never. I mean, you know, I make joke of it that you know I only got out of the bed with my right foot. I never yeah. used my right foot as, as uh, a lot. But yeah, I was just a left sided player. Not the quickest, uh, but you know, I just had good. Ball skills and, um, and and yeah, I just played. I sometimes played up front uh, if needed to, but mainly was uh, as a as a left winger. We play, you know, in those well in that era, we, we always played a, a four four two. So you know, I was you know, four across the middle, yeah, and two up front. So yeah, um, and you the that, wide man. Yeah, that's my, that's one difference. You yeah. being being out on the left. So yeah, yeah. 
you're trying to break into the Juventus first team, the 16, 17 young bloke. It's about that yeah. time that uh, life would have changed big time for you when you got chosen um, for the World Youth Cup in 81. And you, yeah. were, you were super young for that squad. You, like, yeah, you yeah. obviously you went in, in 83 as well. But can you remember how that came about? How it about? all transpired? Yeah, yeah. Um, what happened was uh, at the time that... Uh, Brunswick Juventus, it was uh, Tony Boggy was the the senior coach. Yeah. Uh, Tony Boggy was the senior coach, I remember. And what, what was happening uh, back then uh, with the national team? It was, there was only the national team and the under 21s, and, and that was it. There was no under 17s, there's no under 23s. Yeah. So there was only two national teams. Um, and Liz Scheinflug, the, the coach of the of the youth team, he would he would have his um, uh, coaches that he would bring up uh, interstate and say, if there's anyone that you recommend for a trial, mm. uh, uh, please let me know. So Tony Tony basically gave me the chance to go and uh, do a, a camp, a so-called camp uh, with the, with the youth team, um, probably. Probably about six months. It was only probably about six to twelve months out from the actual uh, uh, World Youth Cup here, here in in Australia, because uh, prior to that they had they had uh, pretty much their squad was probably set. Three quarters of their squad was already set. There was Stevie Blair, there was Oscar Crino, uh, Peter Riscopoulos. Um, Paul K, Marcusis, David Mitchell. Yeah. So the squad the was really, yeah. yeah the spine was the, the squad was there, but there was probably about four or five uh, positions still up for grabs. Um, so I went for trials, and um, I came back and uh, I did well, and then and then after a, a couple of weeks, I went for another trial. Um, there were all different camps. In, there was one in Sydney. Then there was one in Adelaide, I remember. And then the last one was in Canberra. And in Canberra, um, Les Schoenflug uh, invited, uh, I remember, invited, uh, t- I think it was uh, 20, oh, sorry, I think 24, 24 players. And 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 he, he had to, that was the last camp where he had to cut the squad to 20. For, yeah. and, and nominate those 20 for the World Youth Cup here in Australia. And, um, yeah, I, I, it was, there was two players that were underage like me. There was myself and Jimmy Patikas, uh, which we made the under-21 squad basically when we were uh, 17 because the rest of the squad were always two years older than us. They were all 19, 20. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So when if leading into the trials... Um, knowing that you were that little bit younger, did you give yourself yeah. a, a good chance of making it? What were you? What was your yeah, yeah, look, feeling? Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I felt I felt really confident, um, um, and uh, there was there was there was a, a player called John Little that played I know, for. I know Johnny. Uh, yeah, do you know John Little? Uh, so he was the left side player at Old Town City. Now, I don't know what happened with John Little. Um, was every time we went into camp, he wasn't there. So I really, I, I don't know what happened. Um, so he, the, made, he made the final squad, though. He made the final squad, yeah, they're, they're exactly right. Um, so I don't know. Um, so, so going back, sorry, uh, we, we, we got... We we got to the to the last uh, camp and I and I, look I thought I had a good chance of making the squad. Forget about making the first eleven because I thought uh, look I'm I'm way behind there yeah, yeah. Uh, making the first eleven. But I, I thought making the squad I thought I had a, had a good chance. I, I, we had played a lot of practice games um, in the camps and you know and 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 to Les Shineflake's credit he gave me he gave me a, a good chance of. Uh, Exposing myself uh, in games, yeah. so yeah. I had a fair enough uh, go at it, uh, and I felt comfortable. Yeah, I mean, in, you know, uh, amongst the plays that were already been there for for majority of the time, you know, Peter Scopolis and 
uh, and, and Oscar Carino and Stevie Blair and Howard Trudenick and um, yeah, so all of the all of those plays they made me feel welcome. So um, yeah, I made the squad and I was just over the moon. You know, I couldn't believe it. You know, I was 17 years old playing under under 21s. Of course. Uh, but but it, a funny thing when when he announced the squad in Canberra, um, we were all in the. I remember we went to a we were staying at a hotel and. We watched uh, we watched the 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 uh, youth cup prior uh, the one the first one in seventy nine which, yeah. which Diego Maradona played in and I, now I watched Diego Maradona when he was you know eighteen nineteen and and uh, he he just uh, he inspired me uh, to to make it even more because I, I watched the play over I mean when he was. 18, 19, playing in the World Youth Cup in 79. Yeah. I think they played, I think it was in, um, I think it was in Japan. Or, I think, it, yeah, somewhere in Asia, but they ended up. In they Asia, but they played against, they played against Russia. That's right. And they, and they won 3-1. And I watched the highlights and, and they were just, they were just trying to kick him off the park. And he was just riding every tackle like a hurdle. You know, it was, yeah. you know it with a smile on his face. And I said, Oh, this guy here is just unbelievable, you know. Um, and you know, of course, he went on to be one of the best players in the world, you know. Yeah, that catapulted yeah. him onto the world stage. That little, oh, hundred percent. Um, and obviously, we were starting to get footage of it. Um, and getting because you didn't get much footage, but that footage that was coming from overseas, you know, was blowing us all away, really. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. uh, percent. You know. Things like that, that that you would see, you know, first time I saw a player like that, you know, at a, at a young age, and I had I was in a similar age, and I said, "Oh, geez, you know, he's inspired me now even more to to, to make the national team and yeah. go on to to do other things, you know." Yeah. Okay. So we're going into the World Youth Championships which from a player's point of view, fans' point of view. We were all excited, right? Aussies with, with international teams playing. In our towns, and obviously yeah. you guys were based in Sydney slash Canberra. Yeah, we're based in Sydney. Yeah, yeah. we're based um, in Sydney. So, and I've spoken to a few people. You know, yeah. The main one I've spoken to is um, Blairy, but he won't he won't ever do an interview. So, but he'll talk <laughs> he'll talk talk all day about it, but not on not on camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blairy's there. Yeah. So take me back to um, the first match and walking into the stadium. You remember that bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, that was quite surreal and um, quite unbelievable. Uh, you know, we it was at this Sydney Cricket Ground, Cricket Ground, yeah. And um, and we, we 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 got off the bus and we walked through the crowd and and um, actually Peter Rescopler says that that for some reason he says when we walked through the ground and everyone saw our track suits and everyone started, you know, you know, started, you know, chanting, you know, Australia, Australia. And, you know, uh, Peter Skopoulos said that he turned to someone, uh, whether it was one of the players and says, oh, you know, there's something special that's going to happen here tonight. You know, I don't know why he said it, but he said, look, something special is going to happen tonight. And yeah. that were, that were the, 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 the no, well, there were the current uh, World Youth Cup holders because um, yeah. they won it in '79, um, and they had some good players in in there. You know, Argentina is always <laughs> you, they course. can make uh, yeah. three or four yeah. three or four national uh, teams from their uh, from their country, mm. uh, and um, yeah, and we um, and we beat them two one um, that night. And you know, um, you know, Scopo Peter Scopolis says that. Um, you know, it was his pass that, uh, <laughs> that uh, the second, the second, the, the big, I said, I said, I think you've been watching too much, um, uh, rugby, you know, when they, when they throw the bomb, uh, yeah. back, back when bomb. they throw the bomb up yeah. in a year, yeah, uh, bomb. and David Mitchell chased it down, got a good, uh, got a good reflection off his body, fell to him, squared it to Ian Hunter and he scored the winner. Uh, Marcus has scored the first one. Um. Yeah, I found it um, that game there. I mean, I, I got taken off, but I, I just, um, you know, that was it was just so quick and fast that um, yeah, I, I feel that my fitness wasn't as as good as the others uh, back then. But look, you know, um, 
you, you give it a hundred percent and you see how you go. And, you know, you know, we won two, one. So, um, from there, we, I think we went, we, we, we had to go, we, oh, we went to Newcastle. We, we, we flew to Newcastle and then we played against, um, uh, Cameroon. Um, that were, that were, and you know, the, the African countries, they're, uh, uh, very physical, uh, and we drew three. I think we were three one down at one stage, and we drew three all. Uh, so we 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 escaped that, and, and we got a point, and then uh, and then we and then we came back to Sydney, and and we had to play against uh, uh, England, and um, we drew again one all. So we went through through to the next uh, qualifying round, and we met um, we met we went. We met uh, West Germany in, in Canberra, and um, yeah, you know I, th- I thought we, we had uh, we had the better chances um, in the first half. We just didn't take them. Uh, we got a penalty, and and uh, you know uh, you know Mark takes it, and and the keeper saves it, and um, and then you know they, they go on and they win one nil, and they went on to win it at the end, and. I think they played uh, Qatar in the final and they beat them 4 0 in the final. Uh, uh, we were at the swimming pool, wasn't it? There's was a swimming pool. Yeah, yeah, at the SVG. But actually, we were, we were all at that game, uh, all, the, all the, well, the, the Australian team, because we flew out the next day. Uh, they organised, a, they organised a, a tournament in China. So we all flew out. We watched the game. It was, yeah, it was a, just a, uh, it was a, just a swim pool. Uh, we all flew out and we we played in a tournament in China. With, there was China, Egypt, and uh, America. Okay. So we yeah we just did a we played a tournament there and then we came back and um, yeah and then and that was it. You know. Um, what overall? Yeah. What was your reflections now that it's done? Still as not from today's point of view, but as a seventeen-year-old yeah. in the tournament, what's going through your head as a player now? From an uh, what's, going, point. what's going through my head is that 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 now I'm I can well uh, I've made it as far as uh, playing first team football for my club. Um, I, I thought well I've got a, a similar side now a similar position now with uh, Jimenez and you know being in in, in the squad or being the first eleven yeah. uh, and, and that's what I achieved and that's what I did um, so. Uh, John Margaret is, at that time came across to Brunswick Juventus. Well, we're still, well, mind you, when when back in '81, when in the World Youth Cup, so we there was we were, I was in the state league, so every player in that in that squad were were associated with an NSL side. So I was the only state league player uh, in that squad, uh, and. I had a few nibbles from Adelaide City and Marconi, and um, but nothing eventuated. Uh, so I, I decided to stay with uh, Brunswick Juventus, and so I so we 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 stayed together in uh, in eighty. I think eighty. I think eighty nine or ninety. I think eighty nine. We 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 got in the. Um, oh, sorry, no, it was earlier than that. I think. Uh, about 83-ish? 83, 80, sorry, 84. 84, 84, 84, 84, 84 that's right. 84, we got into the NSL. Uh, and John Margaris came over and he yeah, he over, you know, he he cleaned out a few of uh, a few of the players and started preparing um, the, the the team for NSL, you know. Uh, I did my I did my knee in 84. Um, in that night Ampol Cup games uh, against Preston, uh, and I was out for the whole year. So um, the first year of the NSL, I really didn't, you know, um, play at all. So I came back at the end of the year, as far as doing my rehab. I was doing my rehab in '84, and then I came back, um, yeah, around Christmas time '84, and getting ready for. Um, the, the season to start in 85. 85, okay. Yeah. So yeah. You went into, would have been 
85, the Ampol Cup might have just been changing to the Buffalo Cup. Yeah, you, you yeah Buffalo that. Cup. That's the one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was Ampol then Buffalo Cup. Yep, yeah, that's, that's exactly good. right. Um, and that's when you found yourself um, not playing, I guess, but working your way back from the injury. Is that? Yeah, I was working my way back from the injury. Um, um, so, so, um, but, Oh, sorry, I'll, I'll go back a bit because yeah. we, we've missed. Uh, we, so in 83, 83, 83 the World, U- yeah, 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 the, the eighty three World Youth Cup, um, we we had to qualify for that. Yeah. So, so the, as I said, so there was only Jimmy Batigas and I that was eligible for the eighty three yeah. World you were Youth young Cup. Enough to go again. Yeah. Young enough to go to the next level. Yeah. So there was a next batch of next batch of uh, players that were coming through through the NSL. So your, your Frank Farinas, yeah. your Tom McCulloch's, yeah. your David Lowe's, your Rod Brown. Well, well Rod Brown, his son's playing now for yeah, Brisbane Raw. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, so now uh, Jimmy and I are, are, are amongst all these players and we've now, the, the World Youth Cup is in Mexico. It's correct. Mexico yeah. is a host nation. Uh, so we've got to qualify. So we've got to play. We've got to go through. A, back then it was Oceania, then South South American uh, qualifications. Yeah, playing Costa Rica along the way or something, didn't you? Uh, yeah. So we play. We go to we go to Papua New Guinea. We've got to play New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, and that was uh, that was that was. Uh, I mean, most of those Papua New Guinea players weren't twenty one. I can tell you, they yeah. had beards down to their <laughs> knees. Uh, I said, I said to I said to David Lowe, I said, there's no way that these guys are 21 years old. But anyway, we we qualified for the Oceania and then we had to go to Costa Rica and play Costa Rica and Israel. Yeah. Um, a pretty hostile environment. Um, I mean, you, you think about what's going on now with the world. I mean, back then, uh, there was a lot of civil war and guerrilla warfare. Uh, amongst uh, Honduras and Costa Rica and all you know all those little countries around there and it was pretty it's pretty scary and um, you know we had uh, security people that would walk with us around the streets and with machine guns and make sure that you know we you know won't get uh, hijacked or anything like that the things were you know going a bit crazy in in those yeah. countries yeah so we qualified we qualified and uh, and we 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 went to Mexico, so we we had um, Mexico, Scotland, and South Korea. Uh, South Korea in our group. That now, was a hard group. That was a that was a hard group. Now Mexico was a host nation, so you're up against a hundred thousand Mexicans chanting against you. Uh, Scotland were the European champions. Correct. Uh, they had a good uh, side. Actually, they had a good side. Dave McPherson, Paul McStay, Pat Niven. Eric Black. Eric Black. Uh, that, yeah, they, they hadn't lost a game for three years. So we go, the funny story is we go to the Aztec Stadium where the famous Maradona hand, hand of God, you know, we're playing there. Yeah. Yeah. That, was the, that was the first game against Mexico, 100,000 people. Uh, we're in the bus uh, and there's, there's people everywhere. Les Schoenflug turns around. We're about probably about a, a, kilom- a kilometre away from the stadium. We can see the stadium from a distance, of course. And and, and Les Sean Flux says, uh, look, uh, everyone, we were running late because the kickoff was at a certain time. And I think they delayed the kickoff because, uh, because of the traffic. So uh, Les decided, right, everyone get off the bus. We've got to get our gear and we're going to walk to the stadium. It was only, you know, probably a K or something, yeah. a kilometre away. Uh, because it was just a traffic jam. Anyway, we had the tra- we had the Australian tracksuit on, oh. uh, and <laughs> and, uh, and and the Mexicans started to they saw it, so you know they they tried to put us off our game, and they were oh, picking oh, up yeah. little stones, yeah. picking up little stones and throwing at us, you know, abusing us, you know, just you know, <laughs> trying to put put us off our game, but. We get there, got delayed 20 minutes. Uh, you know, it was just a dynamic atmosphere. 100,000 Mexicans, when, when you hear them singing the national anthem, it's just un- unbelievable. 
Um, and we we survived and we, we drew one all, Frank Farina scores. Uh, we drew one all and then we went to uh, we went to Toluca in Mexico and played uh, Scotland. And that's where Jimmy Jimmy and I actually Jimmy and I scored scored the, the two goals and uh, and we, we beat uh, Scotland two one. The last minute, Joe Risotto played a long ball from the full back, yeah, over the top and, and Jimmy as he does, he's, he's good at running onto uh, balls like that and uh, rounded the keeper and, and, and put it in and, and the, the whistle went. So, tell me about Jimmy's goal. Just, tell, me, tell me about yours. Yeah, what you, uh, that was a, it was a throw in. It was a throw in on the far side, on the right hand side near the near the corner flag, and I think David Lowe uh, chested it and just kind of like kicked it over his head. It was just a high ball. Uh, into the 80, it was a nothing really ball in the 18 yard box, and and it was just outside the 18 yard box, and and I think the the fullback went, oh, I kind of like went to header it, but then I stood back, and I just watched what he would do, and he he kind of like missed it all together, and it kind of like bounced, and then it went, once it bounced, it, it it hit my chest, and I just hit, hit it on the half volley, and 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 put it in the bottom right hand corner. So yeah, that was. It was uh, it was pretty you, good. You, you hit it sweetly, right? You, yeah, you, I hit it. Yeah. yeah, hit it on the sweet spot. Yeah, yeah, as you, they say. You, you know when you hit those. Well, it's, either, it's either that or that goes into the car park. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it was that was a special goal, special win. What do you, what do you remember about after that game? Uh, the, 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 the beating the, beating the, European the champions. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh look, it was we were just we were so pumped and you know we were really we thought we would go to the next level again. Uh, I, I thought, look, I, I thought out of the two teams, the 81 squad and the 83 squad, I, I thought the 81 squad was, I thought it was a better squad. Uh, I th but I thought the 83 squad, uh, I, I think it, it had potential to to go further. Uh, if, 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 it, if that sounds if you can work that one out. But I, I, I thought 83, after winning that game against Scotland, I thought we just needed to, to, to draw against South Korea. That's and right. we, were through to the, we were just through to the next round. And unfortunately, we, we, we lose to, uh, to Korea 2, you know, South Korea 2-1, and we, we, we bundled out of the, the qualifiers, you know. Uh, were they just too slick, you reckon? For the, on yeah, the I think they were. They were just too slick, you know. Um, I think I think we knew if we just needed a draw. Um, I think we we're playing too conservative. Uh, you know, we, we won't. We, we're just not playing natural our natural game. We just wanted to get the point and just go on to the next phase. And and you know, you go in, you go into your shell a little bit. And yeah, we we and they got us on the hop. And as you said, you know, they were just too quick. And the other results didn't go our way, and um, yeah, you, next thing you know, you you, you you haven't qualified, you know. Yeah, so, need, needing a draw is almost the worst result, isn't it? To go in. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes if you if you've got to go out and win, I think I think it's it's. I'd rather do that than yeah. than than yeah. just sit back and you know um, absorb the pressure and maybe you know try no, it's to a different, different mindset goal. altogether. Yeah, right? a different mindset, hundred percent, George. You know, but look, it was just a great, you know, the the. And, and, and prior to all this, uh, so from from 1981 to let's say 83, 84, I was travelling with a group of players, uh, going to tournaments. I went I went to a tournament in in Papua New uh, in um, in um, in what in Mexico, uh, and I met the, the great Cesar Manotti. You know, the, 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 yeah, the, the, the coach of, of yeah. Argentina. Yeah. 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 You know, he was, you know, I, I would, you know, I played against um, uh, Dunga from, I mean, I, I look I look back at my, the record, the little uh, booklets and records that I've got. And, you know, you don't know who you've played when, you know, as they go on to their careers. And then you look back and you go, geez, I played against Dunga. I played against Burachaga. Yeah. Uh, at the time, you know, they were, they at the time, they were, you know, you, you say, oh, "Who's that?" But but now you go, "Geez, you know, these guys, you know, Dunga, you know, captain of uh, Brazil, coach Brazil, Budachaga scored the, the winning goal in the World Youth you know, in the World Cup, Cup in yeah. 1986." Yeah. So you know, um, 
uh, 83, there, there was Van Basten, uh, even uh, uh, Van Skip was in the Holland, in okay. the Dutch side in, yeah, in 83. Yeah, yeah. So you're uh, rubbing, yeah, shoulders, was, rubbing shoulders with some of the best. Uh, you're rubbing shoulders, you know, I mean, you know, uh, back then with, you know, some 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 great players that, that, that would become, you know, one of the greatest players in the world, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, good memories. All right, we'll, yeah. we'll jump again back. So you've had the the knee reconstruction. Was that from playing, or had you? Yeah, it was playing. It was it was the and oh, as I you said, the yeah. night series, the Ampol Cup. Yeah. Uh, I remember it was against uh, yeah. Preston Macedonia. Okay. Uh, it wasn't a tackle. It was just my. I was just. I, I went to to receive a ball, and I was just off balance, and my and my knee went on me, and I knew straight away that I'd done something really bad because I heard the clicks. I was in excruciating pain, uh, came off, um, and my, my knee was like a balloon the next day. Uh, then I went to see my orthopedic surgeon. And back then, you know, um, um, the procedure was you, you would have a, a knee reconstruction um, and your leg will go in plaster for six weeks. So um, I was in plaster six weeks, took it out, and I, and I just did rehab. I remember doing the rehab uh, because we we had relocated to Brunswick Juventus at the Gillen Oval at the at the football ground, the soccer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I was I was going to the to the Brunswick bars, and they had a, a an old gymnasium upstairs, and I would I would do weights and I, I, I would swim. And actually, I I, I bumped into Tony Liberatore, the, the AFL player for the Western Bulldogs. And uh, he was going through the same thing. So we were doing our rehab together. So that's what I would do. And, um, yeah, and I got back to uh, – look, I got back to running after seven months. Uh, not competing, but just running straight lines. And, yeah, um, and, 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 yeah and, then I, and then I got back into the squad in 85. Okay. All right. Yeah. So it wasn't going too well, but you were taking your time to get back in. So I guess you've been around the world. You've been to two World Youth Cups. You've now got the injury set back. So you're trying to get back on the bike and as they speak, yeah. as they say, and, and, and get going again. But you weren't playing and, uh, no. in the pre-season and it caused a little bit of an issue with um, the fans and the current coach at the time, Tommy Trainer. That's all. Give us your version of the events of the time. Yeah, well, um, they, they got Tommy Trainer. I think he came from uh, George Cross. Um, and... Yeah, I'll just come back from my injury. And um, um, I think they, 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 they had recruited uh, they recruited some players and, you know, for the Ampole Cup, uh, for the Buffalo Cup, sorry. Yeah. Um, and for some reason, um, there was one game where um, I sat on the bench and... I think a supporter, you know, you know, you have the, we always have a fickle supporter behind the the dugouts, and you know, and always giving. Club member. Hundred <laughs> yeah. uh, percent. His name was Giovanni. I remember, yeah. and he oh, nothing nothing used to satisfy me. Even when we used to win, there was always something they used to be upset about. So anyway, um, it was him, and there was other some other supporters of, uh, and I was sitting on a bench and I could hear uh, the commotion going on. And, and I think uh, a committee person got involved uh, probably after the game. And it, that's how it had all escalated. I was, I was still, you know, still a bit young and, and I, I didn't think anything of it. And um, anyway, and we lost that game also. So there was more added pressure on, on the coach and um, yeah. And then I, then we found out, uh, probably you know the Tuesday at training that um, that uh, yeah they they had um, sacked uh, Tommy Trainer. Look, it was very unfortunate because that was his. I think he only coached it for three or four games or something. And uh, yeah, they 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 got rid of him and they got they got John Margaritas straight away. Uh, John came in and John demanded that um, you know he wanted to get some quality players in the squad uh, Tony Scavolo was the was the president of the club um, a great person um, uh, very successful as far as business is concerned but he he just wanted you know he asked John Margaritas I remember he said look John what do you need 
what do you need to win the championship? And John goes, well, you know, I need, I need to buy players. And he says, well, you tell me which ones. And, you know, as long as, you know, we, we're up there competing, uh, you tell me which ones. So he, I think they went out and at the time they got uh, Peter Lewis from Melbourne Knights um, and also uh, Yaka Banovic. And Yaka was a great goalkeeper. Yep. Um, and um, yeah, so, so he recruited uh, a few good players. Mickey P was there. I think uh, Joe Caruso, our team manager, uh, he recruited Joe Pavlicides and Mamed Uh They were playing at Port Melbourne yep. uh, in the seniors. Uh, then you had Paul Wade, you had Robbie Cullen, uh, Brian Brown, uh, John Dowie, uh, Peter Lewis, as I said. Uh, Eddie Campbell, uh, look, pretty strong you know, squad. Yeah, very str- strong squad. And Joe Swinney up front, Andrew Zinni. Uh, yeah, so we, we we had a good squad, a very strong squad uh, in '85. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And I'll get to the successful part of it, but you threw up some names that I really, really want to get your opinions on. Um, especially because they made such a huge contribution to the game and especially Juventus as well, right? First one you mentioned was Joe Caruso. So tell yeah. us about, obviously, we know he was involved at the club, but there was a personality, yeah. there was someone there that's played a big part on the club and probably for you too. Yeah, 100%. Joe was a, you know, a very influential person. It was, he, look, it was like... Like now, you say he was a team manager slash uh, agent, you know. Uh, but he looked one thing he did, Joe, was he looked after the team. The team came first, he protected the team. Yeah, um, if you were in any kind of uh, strife or anything, you know, you go see Joe. Um, he was kind of like the, the Eddie Maguire of uh, <laughs> of Juventus back in the 80s, you know, he was he knew everyone. Um, you know, he pulled the strings. Um, he ran a, I remember he ran a, a travel agency. In Sunshine. So, yeah. In Sunshine, yeah. So he would know, and this is what, what he told me when he, when he uh, signed John Dowie. Uh, he said to me that, um, because back then in the 80s, there was a lot of, the, the influx of British players were coming to, to Australia. Yep. The semi-pros making a name uh, and uh, Joe would find out uh, that John Dowie was coming down to, um, to Australia from, and John Dowie played for Celtic. And yeah, no, player. yeah. So um, he, he said, well, I'm going to go to the airport and I'm going to, I'm going to sign him at the airport. <laughs> so Joe would go, Joe would go, you know, three o'clock in the morning, he's got his cigar and all that. And Joe would go down there and, you know, there's John Dowie off the plane and, and he says, you know, I, I got John Dowie. He, he, he was going to sign with George Cross, but, um, you know, he spoke to, uh, you know, Robbie Cullen and all the Scottish guys and said, look, you know, you've got to sign this guy. He's, he's good. They gave him the heads up uh, about John Dowie. And so he would go down there and, um, and, and sign plays of that ilk uh, for the club. But he was just, you know, everything, you know, Everything was for the for the squad. Um, he would protect the squad, protect the coach, uh, away from the board. Uh, he was the conduit between the board and 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 the team manager. So, yeah, he was he was a good influential person. Uh, yeah, so he played have. a big big part in, in the success of the club, didn't he? Huge. Oh, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, I mean, you know, he went and got Peter Lewis. He went and got Yakubanovich. He signed other other. You know, he would go and watch. Uh, you know, uh, first division games, and you know he would, he would, he would. Him and Joe, John Margaris will have a look at, uh, you know, Joe Palacerdi. Oh, he he signed Joe Palacerdi's and and Mamed Dragovic on a four thousand. It was a four thousand dollar deal. So back then, it that was a steal. I mean, you know, youngsters. For what, for what, for what, what they got was a steal. For what they got, yeah, a hundred percent. So. Yeah, he was, you know, and John and John and and Joe got along well with each other. They they worked off well of each other, and the players saw it. Um, so we were very comfortable. Uh, the players got along well with each other. It was good camaraderie. The yeah. harmony was good. And I, I mean, yeah, she had some quality players in there, but but you know, we we just stuck together. 
yeah. um, that year, and yeah, well, we ended up winning it. You know. Yeah. No, it helps when the cam- camaraderie is right and the blend of because you get a blend oh. of personalities, right? And sometimes yeah. you can have the best players in the world, but if, if the personalities yeah. don't blend and and you don't That's get right. that. It's yeah, we, we had we had some great personalities in that in that um, team. Robbie Cullen, um, uh, Peter Lewis, uh, Jakubanovic. They're great personalities. Um, look, what halfway was the, through, what was the wily old fox like to work with, Johnny? Margarita. Johnny, yeah, Johnny was. He, look, he, Johnny was. He was very superstitious. A very superstitious guy. He, yeah, yeah. He would. I, I spoke to his. Oh, back then it was uh, the partner, and she said, "Oh, look, I've got to, I've got to grab, I've got to grab the stuff that he's worn last. If we win the game, he says, I've got to lay it out uh, on the bed or you know somewhere else, and 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 leave it and not wash it, touch it, or just lay it somewhere. And 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 comes game day the following week, he's got to put the same uh, um, attire on because he was very superstitious, but." But John was John was good at identifying um, um, uh, the, the opposition's uh, strengths and weaknesses, and he would he would let players know that throughout the week whilst we were training. Yeah. Um, and um, he would identify you know all the big players, and he would tell you know certain players you know we've got to nullify this area here, or we've got to use you know, their left hand side was just the weakest, and so he was good at doing that. Uh, but he, he was a good character, John. Yeah, so he was street uh, smart when it came to soccer. He was a street smart, yeah, he was. He was street smart, yeah. Uh, cool. Robbie Cullen, yeah, the yeah, tiger. Well, tiger, he, he, well, he ended up marrying uh, Dougie Brown's sister, correct? Uh, that's right, and um, yeah, I see Robbie, I see Robbie's uh, he was a good player, he was a uh, he just. Typical seven, get the ball, run at players, whip balls in, you know, short, scrawny little guy, but he just, you know, just fearless, you know, just just run at players all the time. Yeah. Uh, Robbie was great. I mean, look, that that team, as I said, halfway through the year, we're sitting on top of the league. Tony Scavallo invites us to his, um, his house in Kew. Um, we have a barbecue yep. um, yep. with the pair, with with the partners, and he announces that he says, "Look, um, he gives he gives everyone an envelope. It's a hundred. There's a hundred dollars in it. Uh, back then, it was you know. Uh, that's a, that's was, a fair <laughs> whack. That's a fair whack. You know, just for me on top of the ladder. we were having a barbecue, having a few drinks. Everything's everything's great. And and John, uh, sorry, Tony says, "Look, if we win a championship." If we if we go on to win the, the you know the, the championship, we're going to go to Italy and play a game there. And everyone just at that time, everyone said, "Yeah, okay, Tony, you know, uh, no worries, give us another beer, and uh, that's it." You know, yeah. uh, but no one thought anything of it. You know, so so yeah, come at the end of the year, we you know as we're getting closer to finals, and you know um, he mentioned it again, and um, yeah, lo and behold, we you know we 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 end up flying to, to Rome, playing against Roma uh, when we won the championship. That was fantastic. Before you fantastic. did, though, you played the two-legged, you got to the grand final, two-legged grand final against a pretty strong Sydney City team, right? Yeah. yeah which they were always pretty strong in, in, in the well, well, Sydney City, the 80s. They were the, yeah, the number yeah, one. Yeah, well, Sydney City, month. yeah, there were, there were, there were, well, Sydney City back then, so um, you had, well, Frank Lowe was a, was a chairman. Of Sydney City Akoa, mm. so Sydney City Akoa had their squad. You know, there was John Cosmina, there was David Mitchell, uh, 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 Joe Watson, um, and there was, there's, Jerry Gomez as well. Steve Jerry Gomez is in there. So there was about seven. I mean, there was seven or eight players who were playing for the national team. David yeah. Ratcliffe. Yeah. There was yeah. seven or eight. Uh, you know. There were seven or eight players playing for the for the national team, so they were they were a good unit. Um, and and back then in '85, there was the northern and the southern division. Uh, the league was split up into two. I don't know why. Yeah. So we won the the southern division championship, and, and Sydney City won the northern. 
And so they they played and they did a playoff for the the, the Australian champions national and, champions. And, yeah. National champions, yeah. Mm. So we 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 play Sydney's. We played uh, Sydney City uh, on the Wednesday night in Sydney. I remember at St George Stadium. Uh, very bumpy, um, very <laughs> windy. It was a windy. You know, you, you can hear the planes go Flight over. Coming over, yeah. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like you look. Uh, and we remember it was a windy night and it was wet too, and and it was terrible. And we were actually we were with the wind the first half, and we and actually I scored. Tony Pizzano was in gold. Um, I know the ball came to me outside the the box, and I just hit it, and it just kind of like it was that bumpy the ground like in the in the box. Pizzano goes down, and and, and the ball goes over his hands, and no, it goes yeah. in the. The back of that, so it's one nil. So, so we 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 defend like like crazy. We're you know playing away, and you know one nil is you know that's that'll do Good us. Result. Yeah. Good result, and and they just kept peppering. I mean, I remember they they should have at least drawn that game because um, they were with the wind the, the second half, and they were just we, we took an absolute barrage, and we yeah. we just yeah. held off and um, held off till we got uh, to Melbourne, and yeah, uh, and then. And then we yeah we win one nil again here and I remember uh, I think it's Richard Miranda takes a, a corner kick and um, uh, I think Mickey uh, is it Mickey uh, uh, Mickey Peterson flicks it on and then I just ran into the box and the ball just fell on my feet and I just hit it first time and uh, actually John Paul De Marini was playing for him too he was on the post yeah and um, yeah and we scored one nil again so it was just that was just Unbelievable, you know, a two, you know, a two-legged game, and I've scored both games, and we end up winning a championship, you know. So yeah. How, how yeah. does the boy from Fairfield um, feel at the end of this? At the end of this, now it's his junior club, one club oh, man, yeah. national champions, and you've just yeah. knocked off Sydney City, and you've scored in yeah. both both finals. Both finals, what's, yeah. What's, I going, look, what's, what's going through yeah. the head? It's going through the head, it's totally just on top of the world stuff, you know. You're going, just, you know, how good is this? You know, can it get any better? Uh, so, yeah, I was just, but I, look, I always wanted to, to play in a national team, in the, in the senior national team, yeah. and that was my yeah. my drive. Yeah. Um, so that that was my next mission. I mean, uh, I played in the, in the under, under 21s, so but I wanted to play. Uh, in, a, in the seniors, so that that was my next uh, ambition to to do that. But you know, um, you know, more injuries, um, and and then I think the club uh, got relegated in '89. Uh, went back to the Premier or the State League yeah. back then. Um, I had been there, as I said, I had been there as, as a junior. Uh, they took a different direction. They got uh, they got a coach called Manfred Schaefer from Sydney uh, to Brunswick Juventus, um, and yeah, I, I didn't you know, we 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 didn't get along, uh, and I thought, look, at the time I was I was uh, twenty six twenty I was about twenty six, uh, so I decided, uh, look, I think it's maybe it's best if I I look elsewhere, and I thought. I would um, get some NSL interest, but I didn't get any NSL interest, but I got an interest from Bulleen uh, in the State League. Yeah. And they were on so, the rise, weren't they, at this point? Sorry? They were on the rise at this point, weren't they? They were on the rise. They were on the rise. And Andy uh, Andy Bazikas was a coach there at, um, at Bulleen. They were on the rise. So, and they had some good quality players there too. Anthony Grabak, yeah. uh, um, uh, Robbie Krejcic, uh, uh, Frank Valentich, yeah. um, and, and um, I said, "Well, uh, Draco Lewis. Draco Lewis was playing for for Berlin from Footscray Just. Remember Footscray Just? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Draco yeah. Lewis. Yeah, Lewis, yeah, the left side. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he was there, and um, um, and and I said, "Well, and Tony Vizina actually. Tony Vizina uh, bought me actually. Tony Vizina, and uh, I said, look." So you know, I ended up going there for I think for fifteen thousand um, dollars. The bullion paid for me. It's a lot of money. So that was, yeah, back then. Uh, State, 15, league. State league. 
State not, League. Not for you, league. with respect, but for State League, it was a lot of money. Not a lot of money. So that's so that's eighty nine. So, but and uh, the, so I've so I've I've had I've had a, I've had a few injuries. I, I now I've gone down to State League, which I want to play in NSL. But yeah. my clubs, the club that I've been brought up with, has had been just relegated. Um, I'm, you know, I wasn't in a, in a, in a good space and um, uh, I didn't have a good year. In a, or the first year I went there, I just went through the motions. Um, and then I, I, went, I went to see a, uh, I went to see a sports psychologist uh, in 90. Uh, and, you know, we, we, we were just talking and, and um, yeah, I, I just, I wanted to get back into the NSL. And, and he just, you well, know, we just talked through a few little things and, you know, but, you know, and I did the hard, uh, I, I, I trained hard and I wanted to get back into NSL. So, cut a long story short, um, uh, so 90, so 90, 91, um, I, I've had a good year, um, uh, and I'm I'm attracting a, a bit of interest from NSL clubs, and I remember Andy Bazikas, he says to me that uh, at the time Gary Cole was at the AIS in Canberra, yep. he was coaching there, he was coaching there, uh, but he he just been told that he got the gig at uh, Heidelberg as a Heidelberg coach in the NSL. So and he was and he was and he was and he was going around watching uh, the state league games and trying to recruit. And uh, Andy Andy said to me that uh, he went he actually came to watch uh, Anthony Grebac play. And he says when he came and watched Anthony Grebac, he, he watched you and he says he was and he's pretty keen and he says would you be interested in having another crack at NSL? I said look 100 yeah. percent. And Andy goes all right then so look. He's still in at the IES. He's just he's he's got to he's going to finish off there, and then when the season starts, he's going to ask you to go down and and, and do a trial at uh, Heidelberg. Would you be interested? I said, look, 100. percent I want to get back to NSL. Anyway, that weekend, we're playing. Boyne are playing Green Gully at Green Gully. Um, I break my leg that weekend, oh, and and and. Gary Cole has a major accident. Oh, yeah, uh, was the car crash, didn't he? Yeah. yeah, the car crash from from where he was coming back or he's going there. I can't remember what it was, but he, he had a major car accident and he was in hospital for three months. So he didn't end up uh, coaching Heidelberg and I didn't end up going to Heidelberg because I, I broke my leg in, in 91. So <laughs> wasn't meant it, was, it wasn't meant to be. So after the after the recovery from the leg, what were you? So after, so after that, so after that, I um, I had a year off. Uh, I was, I was, I was married, of course, and uh, and I had a year off. Then I came back in. I came back in uh, ninety. I think I came back in ninety two. Came back in ninety two, and then. Um, I broke my leg again. Uh, I remember playing at we were playing at um, the, the Western Oval. We were playing against George Cross um, and uh, went in for a challenge. Uh, and it was I think it was Steve Mangos played for George Cross. And uh, yeah, I went to get up and I, I felt pain shooting up my leg, and I, I fractured it this time. It, it wasn't a complete break, but and I was you know I was 30 years old, and I thought. You know, I've achieved what I wanted to achieve as a footballer. I played first team football when I was 16. Mm. Uh, I says, well, that's when I, I finished playing, you know, when I was 30. And and then I started uh, uh, coaching uh, straight away, uh, probably uh, six or 12 months after I finished my, my retirement as a footballer. Okay. So where where was your first coaching gig? Was that at Carlton? Well, at Bull Lane. Well, I was at Bull Lane. So I was at Bull Lane. So... Um, so I, I, I coached, I coached the reserves there. Uh, and it's a funny thing is that 
while I was coaching the reserves, there was a there was a young there was a young player that came through the ranks, and um, and he was a left sided player too, and and I and and I, I took a liking to him. He had he had he was very small, skinny, he had the straggly hair, feisty. And he, a bit feisty, yeah, but he, you know, over the top, and but you know, he, 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 he would never stop running, you know, give you everything. And the, the guy's name was Danny Tiado, you know, and um, I sort of guess, yeah. And I said, I said, I said to the committee at the time, I said, look, whatever you do, don't lose this guy. I says, you know, he's he's a bit raw and green. I know he's a bit over the top. I says, but he's got something. I says, so, you know, whatever you do. I, mean, I think it came, it came from Altona Magic at the time. He was at Altona Magic and he, and his dad brought him down and and he ended up he ended up playing in the first team and, uh, you know, did really well. And then Melbourne Knights bought him and then he went on to play for Stoke City and Man City and coach, uh, sorry, captain Man City. So okay. he, he had a, a, a big career. career. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. funny because only two days ago I was speaking to someone... Um, in an interview, who was the Leeds head scout and uh, suggested to Leeds way back then, Danny Tiardo oh, really? one to sign. And uh, oh, really? Howard Wilkinson was the manager of Leeds at the time and, and rejected the scout's advice. <laughs> oh, gee. it's just sometimes it's a bit of luck and, uh, you know, it's it's what the club needs, you know, at the time, you know. Yeah, yeah. All right, so take us back to Bulleen. You're doing a bit of reserves coaching and getting a taste for the... Uh, for the for the new kind of job for you, if you yeah yeah I started getting a you know I started getting um uh, I really really liked the 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 the, the football side of it also uh, the preparation so I um so I stayed there at um at um at um Boyne. um I got a gig at um. Uh, because you know, I got a gig at Faulkner as a senior coach, so I did that. Um, I did a few other gigs, and then and then and then uh, the the Carlton football, the Carlton Soccer Club uh, was formed in 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 the NSL, yep. a brand new uh, team. Um, Eddie Eddie Krinchovic and I. Were, were assigned to, to you know to put a new team on the park. Uh, it was a new uh, you know uh, a new outlook of uh, you know new NSL side um, something new. Yeah. So we went out and we had to go and recruit uh, players. So I really enjoyed the the recruiting, uh, the, the the looking and 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 and, and putting a team together. Uh, from scratch, you know, uh, that really excited me. So uh, we did that, and it was pretty, it was pretty hard, but it was most enjoyable when you know you you go and watch, uh, you know, your Marco Bresciano's when they're 17 years old, 18 years old, he's playing for Bulleen. Mm-hmm. Um, um, Vince Grella came from the AIS. Simon Colosimo. Um, we gave we gave John Markowski a, a, a second crack of you know his his career. Uh, Third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Crack. Yeah, probably the fifth <laughs> time. We said to, we we said to him, listen, if you don't lose any weight, because I think we were the f- the first team to to go full time. So we had a fitness and conditioning coach. So we we made some rules and regulations for uh, Jonesy John Markowski. Look, Jonesy. You know, you've got no other club. You've been to every other club. Um, this is the last stop. You know, if you don't lose weight, you don't pull yourself in, then, you know, we gave him, you know, the, not, the right tools uh, for him to work with. Uh, so he he had to lose weight. Every day he came in, he had to lose he had to lose weight. If he gained weight, he, w- he wouldn't get a contract. And to his credit, I must admit, he, he did lose weight and actually res- resurrected his career a little bit and, and, and made the national team um, that year. So, so uh, yeah, so it turned a few people around and uh, we had, uh, you know, Sean Douglas from, from New Zealand, uh, Marcus Stuartopoulos, yeah. uh, Dina Sadiatis, um, as I said, Vince Gorilla, uh, Andy Vlahos, 
Um, they, put uh, together, they put together a very good squad. And you yeah, Luba Lukanski. So we had a good, a good youth again, a, a good blend of a youth experience. Yeah. And and yeah, and, and we did really well that year. The first year, as you know, we we, you know, we, we got to the finals and lost against South Melbourne. So yeah, no, it was, you know, it was a close thing, and it was a controversial yeah. goal, even if you want to push. Yeah, it. Yeah, controversial goal. Yeah, <laughs> push. Uh, you know, Sean got gets pushed in the back by Combutianus, but but uh, that's they're, they're the breaks. But it was it was good from you know from where we started. You know, we, we just walked into a, a room um, of a whiteboard and. We had to start up a club from from scratch. Now I think, you know, Carlton was way ahead of its time back yeah. then. It would be it would have been nice if Carlton was around now, with the new uh, commercial and marketing uh, way of the A League doing things now. Uh, a bit more exposure, of course, with Foxtel. Uh, but I think we we're ahead of our time. At you know, and you know, the the, the you know the the, the governing body was going nowhere back then and you know we're fighting a losing battle you know yeah. and ultimately um while it worked initially to get the plan going to partner with the footy club ultimately that was going to be the the bit that yeah that was that was the, undone the, as well yeah 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 that was the yeah the dagger that drove it away a little bit because yeah. john look i think uh, at that time john elliott you know, he was the president of the, the Carlton Football Club, the AFL club, um, decided that um, he, he wanted to sell the club. And that's when some private owners came in um, and uh, Peter Jess, um, he decided to take over the, the club. Now, uh, what Peter Jess did, he took over the club, but, you know, we, we didn't have a home and, you know, we, we had to go back to Olympic Park and, um, you know, um, and that's where things went a bit pear-shaped. I think the club back then t- treated the players like, you know, it was like a bit of a meat market where you know, it was just buying and selling and making money. There was no culture amongst the club when... Peter just took over. It oh, was Peter just, Peter just right. came in to uh, just to buy and sell and, 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 and you know, trade and, and, yeah, and yeah. enter into the overseas market, which he thought. Yeah, was, exactly right. I mean, you know, um, he had. Um, that's what he thought. Yeah, yeah, well, that's that was his 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 belief, and you know, he was an accountant. He's a bean counter. <laughs> um, he had uh, Kathy Freeman on on his books. And at the time, she was flying. She was, you know, she she made the, um, well, she won the the, the Olympic medal, um, and yeah. So that that was that was his, you know, that was his thoughts, and and things things weren't going too well there uh, when you know he, he has a meeting one day. I remember it was out in Essendon Fields, uh, one of the hangers there. He walks in one day and says, oh, "Listen, guys, I'm, you know, I'm not." You know, um, I, I, I haven't got the money. I, I can't pay you, you, your wages. So from that meeting onwards, uh, you know, so that was about, let's say, so we, we started uh, Carlton in 96, 97 season. By 2000, 2001, the, the, the club had folded. So, um, yeah, there was desperate. I think at one stage, Tony, Tony Scavallo, Nearly bought the club uh, to take over. I think he bought in his uh, his lawyers and accountants, and uh, but uh, he didn't he didn't follow through. And um, yeah, that's when the club uh, subsided. Now, yeah. what, what where did that leave you in terms of football? Uh, look, I was a bit yeah. Well, as far as you know, coaching was concerned, I you know it, it left me it, it really rocked me. Uh, you know, I, you know, um, especially when you start a, you know, when you start a club, but you know, from the from start, and you see it collapse like the way it collapsed. Uh, you know, it really hurt me a little bit. So, I was a bit shell shocked a little bit. I uh, didn't want to coach. Uh, I just took us, I took a seat back, and um, what I did was I started coaching. Uh, I, I went, I started a business. As, as far as going around to schools and coaching 
uh, kids at schools yep. uh, and coaching teachers uh, so they can teach the kids um, the proper way. Because I, I, actually, Stuart Munro and I, well, Stuart Munro took over the cult in the last couple of years. So we went out to the Sydney um, Federation and we got our um, accreditation for uh, a thing called uh, Curva Coaching. It was a Dutch program. Yep, yep I remember. Which, uh, yeah, yeah. So we we got our certificates there. We brought it back to Melbourne and uh, we went around to schools and clubs and, and started doing that as as, as coaching. So I, I, I really enjoyed it. You know, it was really satisfying. I just wanted to be away from the 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 politics of football back then. I mean, the the the, the game was going down really bad at, at that stage. Yeah, the NSL uh, was going. NSL was really starting to die off. Uh, but, you know, there was there was word that you know it was going to fold, and there was it was just terrible. So then, so I stayed in that for a while. Uh, and yeah, it was. I really enjoyed it. You know, I really enjoyed okay. it. Are you involved in the game today? Uh, no, not really. Not today. Um, no, I'm just. I'm. I'm now 57, and and my son. My son was involved with the football. He played at Green Gully, uh, but now he's 22, so he's got his uh, uni and and. But I still watch. I still watch the game. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, do I enjoy it? Um, I, I I don't enjoy it as much as uh, maybe I'm a bit biased, but but um, I, I think it's a it's an overpossessed game at the moment for me. It overpossessed, uh, and um, and sometimes I, I get bored watching it. Uh, <laughs> um, it. It's it's not as direct, and there's not enough. I don't see a lot of players with enough flair and they use their flair in certain areas of the, of, of the pitch. So going back to when I was playing, there was, so every, every week you would play against your South Melbournes, your Melbourne Knights, your Heidelbergs, your Prestons. Now I can guarantee you each team had four or five quality players in, in their, their respective squads. You know, there was fair some players, quality, fair plays. Yeah. Now, being biased, but that's the way I see it. As far as the marketing and and and, and commercial sense of 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 the game this year uh, here in Australia, I think it's great. You know, good exposure. Um, you've got now the women's, um, you know, been exposed. It, it's come on. It's, it's come on leaps and bounds. Don't get me wrong. Mm. But but for me, I'm talking about the quality. I mean. Do I do I get up in the morning and say oh, I'm going to go watch um, I'm going to go watch Melbourne City and and Western United because I would go and watch Western United because of one player Diamante you know his quality I mean that's why I would go and watch Western United but there's not enough of Diamantes no. you know in in the A League that's yeah. what I'm trying to say and 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 I think I agree with you and it's and there's a, a long story and we don't need to go into yeah, that. Of course. But, but on the basis, on the surface, as we say, um, it's hard to get excited about games um, when there's not individuals like Diamante um, involved. Because if you've got a choice of yeah. entertainment or a choice of things to do, um, yeah. you know, for me, not since maybe Andrew's Brisbane Raw have I well, exactly been, right. been really yeah. excited about watching the A-League. Ever since then, there's it's, probably been the ever since it, yeah, it's gone a bit. Victory hasn't had it? had some good sides that might might have excited you at different times. We'd say, Hernandez and Rojas when they were on fire. Rojas, um, yeah, you know what I mean. But Bar- you know, like Barisha. I mean, you would go, you know, like Barisha. I'm always know. happy to watch Barisha, but yeah, if, he, exactly. if he's playing in a side that won't get the ball up to him, he and I are both yeah. going to get frustrated. <laughs> 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 True, because you've just got to get the ball up to the guys. That you're going to get up to. You're going to get the ball up to him. But yeah. look, if I, look, as, as I said to you before, I mean, I had some the the, the the players that I played with, and I'll give you an example. So every so we we go back to the Gemini days in '85. So so every Thursday night we would have 
it will be the Scottish against the rest of the world, which at which the Scottish call this the Wogs, right? So, the, so there was, there was me, there was uh, Joe Palacertes, Mickey Peterson, Mary Djakovic, Andrew Zinni, myself, will play against a small six six v six small side of games against the Scottish guys, John Dowie, Peter Lewis, the big heart, you know. So, so this is every Thursday night, right? And every Thursday night, these guys will take it. I mean, there was these guys will take it serious. Yeah, I mean, no, know, train, every, train every, every, take should be taken serious. You play. It was taken serious, you know. Play. And this is where I, I learnt my craft, as far as not not as far as the skill is concerned, but as as far as the mentality, the the, the winning mentality. Yeah. I got it off the Scottish guys. Yeah. Was I, I would see it whilst I was playing with them and against them on the park. I would see their reactions. You know, that really meant a lot to them. I mean, when they lost, they lost. Yeah. You know, they, they they would just go off their heads. And at training, it it would be it wouldn't be ninety percent. It would be a hundred percent. You know what I mean? And 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 John Dowie was a type of person that was, you know, he was very quiet, but he would had that white line fever. You know, he he crossed the line. That was it, right? So John Dowie used to kick everyone off the park at training. On Thursday nights, yeah. And on Thursday nights, we used to go to the pub after the Thursday nights, and you know, we used to have some bets while we we're playing these little small sided games. Of course, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a beer, you know. So anyway, I grabbed John Dowie to the side one one night at the at the pub. I said, "Listen, John, no, look, you know, just 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 be careful, you know, just take it easy, you know, um, you know." We 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 you know, playing Thursday night, you know. Just you know, just you know, come on, you know. We had a big big game on Sunday, and you you're going through everyone, you know. And he looked at me. He was so serious. He said, "Listen, I'm doing you a favour." And I looked at him. I says, well, "You're kicking me off the park. Why are, are you doing me a favour?" He says, "I'm preparing you for Sunday's game." He says, "You know, there's the, in every team." You know, your South Melbournes or your Melbourne Knights, there's a John Dowie in there that's got to go after you and yeah. your Mickey P's and all that. He says, I'm preparing you for the game on Sunday. And I looked in and I said, well, well, okay, John, you're right. You just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> and, and, you know, like, you understand, like, there was this, there was ways of skinning a cat. And, you know, he would tell me in, in the harshest way, mm. but maybe Brian Brown, our captain, would, you know, put his arm around my shoulder and say, listen, you know, just be careful on Sunday. He's got to, you know. But John was John was just straight in your face. He would tell you, and if you didn't like it, you know, you see the door, you know, and that's the way it was. Yeah, cool. Tell me about Bomber, Brian Brown. He was the captain. Uh, Brian Brown was a great, yeah, great leader. Br- Br- Bomber was a great leader. Just a great leader. Why? Calm. Huh? Why? Why was he a great Look, leader? No, I felt that he 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 knew. He knew everyone's. Uh, he knew everyone's points where to to push him, and where not to push him. Uh, he knew everyone inside out as far as he, his team around him was concerned. He knew how to press the buttons in yeah. certain players. Now, it, Bomber every Tuesday night, he would stand up, and I remember John Margaris would have a talk. Our our review was. You know, you're sitting in the in the changing rooms, uh, going before you go to training, and John uh, John agrees to say, right, okay, we're just talking about the game on uh, Sunday. Where did we go wrong? Where did we go? But Brian would get up and just give him give a an analysis on 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 the game, on who did well, who needs to do well, who needs to to uh, pick up their game. Um, he would go through the whole you know whole game. And then he would open the floor for other players to have their say. But, you know, he would just analyse the game uh, to a T uh, post-game. And, and, and he would look, great character. You know, and, you know, love to drink. Everyone, you know, liked to party. But when, when you're in the park with him, you know, it was either, you know, you switch on or, you know, he would tell you. He would tell you, like John Dowie, you know, you're not, you're not pulling your weight. You know, you've, you know, he he would he he would tell you, you know, face to face. There was there was no doubt about it. You know, Brian was good, and he became a good coach in Sydney too, by the way. Yeah, of course. Uh, no, I think he's, still, had a, he's had a good career, a long career in, in coaching. Yeah, I think he's still yeah. coaching today. Um, yeah, but, but everyone that I've spoken to in terms of his leadership and 
um, his captain values. Everyone speaks really highly of him. So yeah, yeah, Brian was was yeah, yeah, top class. Okay, yeah, top. defenders of the era, especially in the early eighties, mid eighties, there was some um, big, solid, hard men. When rules were a little oh, bit yeah. different to they are today, oh, you could yeah. get back, oh, yeah. get elbowed, you could get kicked from behind. Elbows, Steel Canal, uh, Peter Lewis. Oh, I, I used to dread playing against Peter Lewis. He used to just. But look, the banter was good. He used to tell me, uh, "Look, I'm gonna." He says, "Oh, look, I'm, I'm gonna kick you off the park today." You know, well, you want me to do it the first five minutes or the last five minutes? I was still a young kid, and you know, I said, "Oh, geez, this guy, he's just, he's just relentless. He just never stops. He's just in your ear all day, and you know." But a good, and then, and then, and then in '85, you know, Gemini's going by him, and I'm, and I'm relieved because. Now this guy here is not kicking me anymore. He's kicking, <laughs> he's kicking the opposition. Same so I had yeah, John so. Dowie, I had uh, Peter Lewis, uh, Brian Brown, and, and, and Eddie Campbell. You know, oh, geez. and you you, you 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 feel ten foot tall. You know, when you when you run out with these guys, you go, Jesus, you know, give me the ball. You know, I'll, I'll, let me do some damage, and uh, you just defend. You know, don't don't worry about it. I don't care. Peter's behind me. He, he can do, you know, all all the hard uh, tackles. You know. But oh, they were just. Yeah, uh, I'm going to give you a really hard question, right? No notice on this one. Yeah. In your in your Juventus career, yeah, sixteen to twenty seven or whatever it was, mm. the best player that you played with. Played with. At Juventus in that uh, 11, 10, 11 year period, one. Uh, one player. Come on, I'm lining you up in the schoolyard. You're the captain, and you got to pick. The First player. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So I'm just now. I'm thinking the '85 <laughs> team, and I'm going. Geez, who would I pick first? Um, Pressure, I'll, eh? Oh uh, yeah, Jesus. Um, I, I would go for Robbie Cullen. Yeah, I would go for Robbie Cullen. Man. Now, you know, he, he, as I said, you know, he, he, you know, he's a white player like me, but he was on the right, I was on the left, and he was just. He, yeah, he, he just see. This is what I'm talking about. He had a great knack of getting the ball and running at players, uh, and that's what he, that uh, he did that really well. And and uh, he put always fullbacks under pressure, back-footed uh, fullbacks. When he got the ball, he just ran at players. And if he even if he, look, sometimes he would lose it, but he kept on doing it week in week out. You know, he wouldn't go in his shell. You know, no. a funny thing actually, a funny thing about Robbie Cullen. Yeah. Uh, when we went to when we won the championship in '85, um, so Tony Scavello says we're going we're going to um, we, we're going to Rome and we're going yeah. to play against Roma. So he came he came good with the promise. He came good with the promise. Yeah. So the story goes like this: so we get on a plane, we land in the Rome airport, and there's some Rome officials there. And there's Tony Scavello. So Tony says, right, just grab your, your your luggage, just just wait here for a sec, and uh, we're back. He went out and spoke to some of the Rome officials. Comes back and says, listen, guys, um, put all your luggage in the room over there. We're getting back on the plane on a domestic flight, and we're flying to Milan, and we're going to go watch Inter Milan against Roma. And we looked at. Tony, we says, Tony, you can't. Mate, we just landed from Australia, you know, to a 24-hour flight. He says, mate, I've organised the tickets. Everything's ready to roll. Just leave your, your luggage in the, in the in the store there. <laughs> we're going to go watch Inter Milan against Roma. So anyway, so we're back on the plane. So we go to San Siro. So, the, you know, and there's, there's, you know, all the Scottish players. There's Mickey P, there's Mamad. Um... So we we, we got to we got to watch Inter Milan, and at the time Inter Milan they had um, uh, Karl Hans Rubenegger was playing for Inter Milan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for Roma there was there was Boniac, uh, Conti, uh, Bruzzo, Graziani. That, that is you know great side. So anyway, after the game, we get back on the domestic flight to come back to Rome, and we're on the flight with some of the Roma players. So there's Boniac and there's Conti. These are the guys that have won. I mean, Conti won the, the World Cup. World Cup in, you yeah, know. Yeah. So we're in the plane with them and we're having champagne and we, <laughs> we, we, 
we're having a, a great time. You know, don't forget this is around November, so our season's finished, and their seasons are really well kicked off. Yeah, and uh, coming into winter. So anyway, we we're there for two weeks, and we're playing Roma at the old uh, National Stadium there. We know where they played against Liverpool and lost yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, on penalties in yeah. the European Cup. I'm a Liverpool fan. I know it well. All uh, right. Okay. So we're there and we're playing against Roma. And uh, so we run out. And anyway, um, we're losing 2-0 we're losing at half time. This is only a friendly match. Uh, and, um, and there's a corner kick. Roma has a corner kick. So I'm on the post. And, you know, back then, all the players wanted to, to grab, to swap jerseys with, you know, all the, yeah, <laughs> all the big course, players yeah, there. Yeah, so, yeah. so there was, there was Bonyak. So I'm, I'm on the post and Bonyak's probably on the, on the edge of the six yard box. So I've, I've, I've looked at him and, and I've grabbed my shirt and I've, I've gone, do you want to swap? Do you want to swap shirts after the game? And he's going, no, no. And I'm going to myself, well, why are you saying no? I mean, you know, it's, it's not very nice of him, you know. And he's kind of like pointing behind. And there's Robbie Cullen at the po- at the back post. And he's gone to me, hey, big man, it's all been organised. <laughs> he's already organised. He already organised it. I says, when did you organise this? He says, oh, this is, I asked him after the game. I says, how did you organise that? He goes, oh, well, you know, when we did the warm up before the game, I, I, I kicked the ball near Bonyak and I told him that uh, can we swap tops you know, after the game? So he says, oh, I organised it even before kickoff. Yeah. And he says, Look, I got a bit, I got a, I got a bit worried because he got, he got taken off during the, during the, 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 the friendly game, and he goes, oh, geez, I don't think he's going to give me his shirt. But apparently, he came in after the game. Into the tra- into the changing rooms, and you know, and, and he promised Robbie Cullen, and and he, and he gave Robbie Cullen his shirt, you know, hand delivered in our changing rooms, and that was was amazing. Yeah, he's a shrewd operator, Rab. He knows. Yeah, 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 yeah. Robbie. Yeah, 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 uh, he's so a shrewd operator. The most important question: Who got Conti's jersey? Uh, I don't know who got Conti's. I got Oddy, a, a defender. I knew I got a, I got a defenders by then. They're all the all the big players of uh, uh, Graziani, I mean, they're all gone. You know, they were, I think uh, some other players got them. But so we, we yeah, we played, yeah, we were there for two weeks. And so from there, from that game there, then I went to my mum's hometown in Pescara, which is about two hours from Rome. Uh, Mehmed went to well, the so-called Yugoslavia back then. Uh, uh, Mickey P went to, to Holland. Uh, Joe Policetti went to Greece. And most of the Scottish boys went to Scotland. And then we came back and, you know, started pre-season again. But that was a, oh, it was just, I mean, again, this is what the game has, has given me, you know, the, you know, exposure to, you know, go, going overseas, number one, but playing against, you know, who, whoever thought I was going to play, you know, stand next to Bonyak, you know, Zabinu Bonyak, and I only played for Juventus. It was, you know, Juventus is my, the best team in the world for me. Uh, you know, Bruno Conti, you know, he's won the World Cup. You know, you know it's just... It gives you some great opportunities to to to, to you know play and and be with some of the great players in the world. You know. Yeah. Look, doesn't matter at what level you played at. At the end yeah. of it, you're left with um, memories and friendships. Oh, right? that's it. The great memories. I'll never. Yeah. You know, we, we, when we get together, we you know when we get together, we we just reminisce and talk about those days when we went to to Rome. You know that that team there, uh, and you know just yeah, it's just great banter. You know, great banter. And you still get together with the 81 youth team, don't you? You guys get yeah, together yeah, well, now. Yeah, well, the 81, it was, that's, that's interesting because that, probably about three years ago, I think two, I think it's been two, two years or three years, um, uh, Mark Cousins rang me up, uh, one of the members of the, the youth team, and said, look, um, the Federation is putting something together um, for the 81 World Youth Team, uh, and they're going to have a, uh, there's going to be a kind of, some kind of celebration and and um, uh, for that team um, in, in Sydney. So what happened was um, at the, at the time, David Gallup he he organised that. Um, so 
we all the players flew into Sydney, uh, got yeah, together with the all except one. Yeah, all except one. Yeah, yeah. Dennis, I think that was the goalkeeper. No, there's another one. You mentioned him. Was another one? Who? Johnny Little. Oh, Johnny Little. That's right. Yeah, mm. Johnny Little. Yeah. I don't know why. Uh, look, I don't. Let's not get into that. No, no, no need to. But yeah, that, I was just. No, no. I, I know that one. Yeah, yeah. It was Johnny Little, and also there was uh, there was um, there was another there was another player, uh, and he was the he was the second string. Uh, I remember he was from Perth, uh, Dennis Ivanovich or something. His name was. I'm not quite sure. There yeah, they yeah. So we we got together. We look, it was just fantastic, you know. Um, uh, just to meet up with everyone and see what they're doing, uh, you know, Jimmy Patikas and David Mitchell. Um, and, and what transpired is we went to the Federation. Uh, they gave us a presentation and they gave us a, an Australian jumper with number 81 at the back of it. So, you know, 1981. Um, yes. Yeah, so, and then from there, we went and watched uh, an A-League game, stayed the night. Um, and then flew back on a Sunday. So that time there, I I, I got close to well, I, I, I got close to Peter Raskopoulos, and we we from from there, and um, he he um, he said, well, why don't we go on a holiday? And I said, well, where do you want to go? He says, well, let's take the wives to the Greek island. So we went. So I I, I ended up now going with Peter Raskopoulos and his wife. Uh, with my wife too to the Greek islands for seven days, and you know, yeah. and then we we reminisced again about you know the good old days, and we're talking about and he invited Oscar Crino and his partner, so we were sitting at the back of uh, this uh, catamaran, you know, in the Greek islands, talking about you know football and you know where's it's taken us, and that was just fantastic, you know. No, it's good, very good. Uh, like I said, memories and friendships doesn't oh, matter what level you played at. Hundred percent. That's what. You're oh, hundred percent. Yeah. 100%, and George. most importantly, I really, really want to thank you for sharing some of your memories and, and um, the friendships with us um, here today. Um, thank again, you, it's taken a little while to get this organised. Lockdown and COVID has mucked us all around, but we've no, finally no. got there. So uh, thank you. I really do appreciate your time. And thank Stefan for helping us with the technology. That's uh, thank you. all right. And uh, may I wish you all the luck going forward. Um, and uh, continued success on and off the field. Yeah, same to you, George. Uh, look, I really want to say thank you for because when I saw you, 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 you came up to me and, and you know you, you mentioned what you were doing and, and you promised that you know you you were going to follow it through. And you know, as you said, you know, with the COVID nineteen, um, you know, you're true to your word. So I want to say thank you. Um, what you're doing is is fantastic. It's good to highlight. Uh, all the ex-players that have come through uh, Australian football. Um, you know, uh, it's what uh, sometimes Les Schoenflake said to me. He says, um, it's not, you know, it's the, it's the people who dug the well, you know, that uh, matter the most and, and not the people that you know, drink on top of the well, you know. So you got to remember the ones that did the hard yards. And I, I think, you know, uh, you know, people in the, in, in, you know, in football in general like you and everyone else, you know, it's good that you're highlighting um, you know, uh, all the all the great memories. No, absolutely, and it's not just the players; it's the coaches, it's the the media. Yeah, uh, it's yeah the, the media. Athletes, That's everyone. Everyone's uh, involved everyone, in the, in the game. Know, on and off the field that have helped build this game to what it is. But yeah, the history is most important, and without the foundation, and the pioneers, you have nothing, mate. But um, you've had a stellar Definitely. career. Um, I've enjoyed you. watching you. Um, like Thank I said. You. A wag school. I took a couple of sickies back in '83. <laughs> yeah, so, I did that. I did that. I did that a few times uh, playing football. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's always <laughs> priority number one, mate. Priority number one. Hundred percent. That was number one for me all the time. Uh, Aban Cantalupo, thank you for the memories, mate. Thanks, mate.